Perhaps the most effective way of checking the spread of the coronavirus is to know who is infected. And to find this out, uh, as uh, many tests as possible must be carried out to help detect carriers and send them in for quarantine. Many have also pointed to the fact that the country's testing capacity is low, despite the fact that the country has scaled up diagnostic capacity for COVID-19 to 53 laboratories in 31 states across the country. Mm. Now, for a population of more than 200 million people, Nigeria has conducted only about 199,016 tests since the pandemic began. Currently, Nigeria is not using the rapid test uh, kits because uh, they have not been validated by the World Health Organization. Joining me now, or joining us now via Skype, is Dr. Nsi Abasi Ekanem, a public health specialist. Uh, Dr. Ekanem, it's good to have you join us now. Uh, a, a, lot, a lot of uh, debate has been on regarding the issue of uh, capacity to test. We see how other countries are, are trying to put effort building more capacity. From the beginning of this pandemic until now, certainly the NCDC has increased capacity and spread when it comes to the testing uh, abilities. But how much of that is really going on? How is that contributing or compounding the issue? Do you see that effort moving on as swift as it's supposed to be when it comes to testing? Well, NCDC has tried um, so far. Uh, so they are uh, testing people. Uh, one of such that the person must uh, have made contact with the uh, um, uh, carrier of uh, COVID-19, uh, confirmed case of COVID-19. And of course, uh, they have shown some symptoms that are clinical of COVID-19. I feel that though we have, a, 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 to an extent, decentralized the laboratory, I think we should do much more. Uh, I think we be able to borrow a leaf of what is happening in Lagos. In Lagos, we don't own have about three uh, or four centers for uh, laboratories. We also have some camps where people can actually visit and have their samples collected. I remember in recent, just a few, uh, last week, I asked somebody, a uh, patient, uh, a suspected case in Ibadan, to try and get to the ICU. It took him almost two days to be able to get tested. I, I think this is the gap that we need to really, really try to fill. We should be able to, even in the states, we should be able to decentralize testing. So that a state can have about, let's say, about 10 to 15 testing centers where samples can be collected. That way we can reduce the drudgery and we can reduce the bureaucracy involved in collecting samples and taking them for testing. So if you ask me, I think we are still low behind in terms of uh, the number of tests carried out. And for us to be able to close that gap, we need to further decentralize testing by establishing either clusters in different local government areas where we can collect samples and then go to uh, take it to the All state. right, Insa Abasi, I might have to interrupt your thought at this point because some persons have said that the process for this test is quite cumbersome and it takes a lot of hours before results are gotten, sometimes days. Is it about decentralizing or the process of the test, which I'd like for you to t talk us through? Okay, well, I think both, uh, both uh, phenomenon accounts here. Number one, the, the, the testing protocol that we are using uh, in Nigeria is still a very, very uh, complex one. I wish that we adopt the faster protocol. With the GNS machines, results are out in less than minutes but uh, fortunately we are still using you know the the PCR uh, uh, you know method which takes a lot of processes for results to be out on one side that a, a challenge and setback on the other side I also think that there's all there's need for decentralization because we still see cases of patients who find it difficult to be able to get their samples of there to NTDC so I think both you know, reasons here coming really, really, really uh, are tangible here. If we can be able to decentralize, uh, you know, testing and also increase or adopt other better measures that will be able to, uh, that has a turnaround period of at least less than 45 minutes, then we can be able to link patients, you know, 
to isolation centers on time and we can be able to test more persons within the limited period that we have. All right. When it comes to flattening the curve, uh, it's not rocket science anymore from some of the countries in the East China and South Korea and the others. They've been able to achieve all of those. What can we do, or what, besides testing, what do we need to start doing deliberately now? Because we have not peaked, we have not plateaued, uh, and the curve is not flattened yet. Well, I think we need to do two things. Uh, number one, we need to, uh, as much as possible, strengthen our disease condition. I am in Lagos, and I will tell you that the other Sunday I went out to observe the adherence. Uh, I made a, did a survey in major, major cities in Lagos to, to, to try to uh, you know, take uh, a, a stock of how negotiations are adhering to the precautionary measures. I'll tell you that it was quite appalling. Negotiations are really not uh, you know, passionate about you know, flattening this curve. You need to see a lot of people uh, putting on their face masks simply because they want to avoid law enforcement agents, not because they understand the risk and the need for them to have themselves protected. So I think we need to further strengthen this message so that Nigerians can cooperate with law enforcement agents, with NCDC and the federal government of Nigeria, so that together we can be able to cut the chain of transmission of COVID-19. If we can do that, I think we will be able to, you know, uh, go a long way to, you know, flatten the curve. And again, uh, if we continue to strengthen testing, because the more we have people, who have been tested and isolated, the less, uh, I mean, the better we get, you know, in terms of achieving elimination. So I think both, uh, uh, you know, both strategies work here. While we strengthen, you know, disease risk communication and get Nigerians to buy in and cooperate okay. in, uh, you know, uh, observing the precautionary measure, we also increase testing too, so that right. both ways and be able to address this pandemic. All right. We thank you so much, Dr. Nsia Basie for your time on the program. We appreciate you. Now, um, a lot of Nigerians are concerned, especially with the process of testing. A majority of them say that they can't access testing even when they put a cold through uh, after seeing that they have uh, uh, symptoms of COVID-19. And we also have uh, an issue with regards to the shortage of uh, the capacity not being enough, as a lot of persons have said. Uh, what really is at a challenge at this point? Uh, is it uh, the fact that we may not have uh, enough uh, uh, virologists or biologists uh, who are to carry out this test? Uh, uh, what really is at the heart of this? I think uh, the issue here, what, what really is the challenge is uh, first of all, that as, apart from Lagos, um, Abuja, uh, Kaduna, and a few other states, most of the states have just one uh, reference laboratory. Uh, some states don't even have at all. Uh, it, it becomes challenging when the entire, for example, a state of about maybe 5 million people, and there's just one laboratory. It becomes difficult because the, the capacity of uh, NCDC at this time uh, seems to be limited. So when you have different calls from different aspects of the state or from different locations, sometimes it becomes difficult for NCDC to be able to connect all of that. I think for NCDC, it's uh, very important at this time that more hands should be recruited so that the workforce can, of course, be beefed up. And of course, uh, there, there is also need for us to further decentralize the testing center, at least uh, those centers where samples can be collected. So people can easily walk into the next street, they can walk into the next district, you know, and have their samples collected without having to go through the bureaucracy and the drudgery involved. So I think uh, uh, it, it's going to really help us as much as possible if we can be able to beef up our capacity so that we can be able to get test, uh, the test carried out. And of course, we should also be using a better you know, technology. The GDS pad machine helps to, you know, to increase the turnaround time. In less than 45 minutes, the results are ready. So I think we need to bring in uh, that too. Uh, even as much as we cannot uh, start using the rapid diagnostic test kit, uh, because uh, it's still under the process of validation with the World Hepatitis, sorry, World Health uh, Organization. 
I think it's important that we use the gene expert machine, which can give us a turnaround period within uh, 45 minutes. The decentralized uh, you know, uh, testing center, and of course, give up the, uh, the capacity in terms of human resource. All With right. That, I think we should... Dr. Kanem, the, the point, when it comes to the symptoms that people, uh, that is displayed or that, that, that comes up for people to think or feel, okay, I, I either have it or I don't have it, uh, it's, 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 it's like any other normal codes and, you know, symptoms. But at, at what point really should anyone feel that I should get tested for COVID-19? Well, you know, the case definition for COVID-19 has really changed within the past few months. Uh, the first time when it came in, I think one of the things that we, uh, the case definition was more tilted towards fever, cough, and you know, sore throat. But right now, you could observe that the trend is moving towards the loss of taste, of sense, of sense of taste and smell. So I think uh, the public has to be informed. Uh, once a patient or once an individual loses the sense of taste and smell, uh, to an, a good extent, then uh, uh, the person should consult or uh, should contact NCPDC. Apart from that, even people who have made contact with confirmed cases are uh, known as suspects of COVID-19. They have to have themselves uh, you know, quarantined and of course they need to contact NCDC in case uh, they start developing symptoms like fever and all other ones. So the, the case definition is clear. Uh, though it has some relationship with other uh, medical conditions like malaria, typhoid, and the rest. But I feel that there are some that are clinical for COVID-19, particularly the loss of sense of test and, of course, uh, mm. uh, smell and then the heaviness on the chest. So uh, the public should be made known the case definition so that at any one time they suffer any of these symptoms, they can contact NCDC immediately. All right, All right uh, Dr. Kanem, thank you for your time on the program.